Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. Today I wanted to talk about spin rackets. I've been asked to do comparisons about these two recent releases from two major brands, Head with their Extreme MP. They also released other Extreme rackets at the same time, the Team, the Tour, Team L and MPL. Those are all reviewed previously on my YouTube channel, so check those out if you're curious about the lighter models or the Tour model, which is a more controlled version of a spin racket. And then there's the Pure Arrow, which is uh, kind of the icon in the industry of spin rackets. And the Pure Arrow 98 is not yet released, expected to be in January next year. So we have a Pure Arrow team and a Pure Arrow, but this comparison deals with 300 gram models. So the kind of standard or the MP models, whatever you want to call it. I'm also going to get into other brands and their spin rackets very shortly. So these two rackets it's all about feel generally there are both improvements over the predecessors both have now denser string patterns for more control i think this is a great thing i really enjoyed both of them a lot more than the previous generation of these rackets uh, the extreme feels a little bit softer on impact but the stiffness is really the same so arm friendliness is, is pretty much the same it just has a slightly different feeling when you hit the ball some players that i've tested these with feel like they get really connected to the arrow and the arrow has been receiving rave reviews. This new model, it's a kind of a throwback to the 2013 model, I would say in many ways, but a little bit more comfortable. So I think Baula did a great job with this one and I'm definitely predicting it to be a bestseller because it's a very good arrow, one of the best ones they've done in years, especially since the, they changed the name to Pure Arrow. But the Extreme is also good, so it's a very tough choice for me if I would choose these personally. I feel like I can hit my one-handed backhand better with this one, maybe because of the slightly thinner beam construction. I feel like it travels a bit more easily in this direction than the arrow. But the arrow I feel more connected to the on drop shots and, and these types of shots. So it's, it's a great racket as well. Both of them very, very good. But yeah, this beam sometimes I struggle with personally. It's quite thick. It is supposed to be very aerodynamic for the windshield wiper motion and these top spin shots. And I think that's generally the consensus, but I do struggle a bit on the one-handed backhand. My one-handed backhand is far from perfect, but it's what I'm doing and I've heard it from other players. So something to consider. Two great rackets. You need to demo them both to understand the feel. None of them are, are too stiff, I would say. There are mid-60s. If you have tennis elbow, you might still want to think twice or just really adjust your string choice. Maybe go for a multi-filament string, a hybrid setup where you hybrid a multi-filament and a polyester string or a polyester string at a lower tension. If you string it up at 55 pounds, which many club pros recommend their players because they've seen Rafa do it or maybe they play with it themselves, 55 pounds or 25 kilos with a polyester string like RPM Blast, which is the usual recommendation, can be quite stiff and not so great for your elbow. So you, I would really recommend you to stay around 50 or technically sometimes even lower. You know there are pro players that use like 25 pounds, but you don't need to go that low. But going a bit below the, the standard is something I'd recommend you to try and see if you can get used to that. A lot of players that I've talked to when I uh, consulted with they they have tried it and they actually don't want to go back to higher tensions so it's worth uh, giving it a go see if that's for you but very difficult to make up my mind out of these two rackets i think these are the my favorite spin rackets on the market right now in this category 300 grams relatively easy to use you can be an intermediate to advanced player and you'll be happy with this one probably a little bit too heavy for the beginner player so i'll definitely recommend going for a team version of these two rackets if you're a beginner. Uh, but both of them have denser string patterns, better directional control. They have swing weights very similar around the 320 mark, so quite good stability, good power, good spin potential with a lot of movement in the string bed, but not too much where you feel like you lose control. You can play pretty confidently on flatter shots also with these two models. And it's really about your preference of design, your preference of brand, like the grip shapes are slightly different. Bubble out run a bit thicker, so usually I go for two with bubble lots while I can play with a three with, with head, for example. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. But I, I know most people, they have a brand preference, they like it. That's why I usually want to mention a bunch of different brands 
because I know you might be missing out on your favorite brand and it's good to get an understanding of what that is when you're looking for a spin racket or a control racket or something like that. Give them a go, see which one you like, let me know in the comments. Two great options for you who want power and spin but without the stiffness that you know is going to give you tennis elbow and something like that. It's actually relatively comfortable for being these types of stiff power frames. We have other brands of course so let's have a quick look at those. We can start with the Yonex V Core 100. My buddy Magnus in my hometown Vesteros is using this one. He's in love with it. This one is slightly extended by Ring and Roll and they do a great job. They've extended the prestige for me and they, they really know how to customize rackets. It's a powerhouse with the extra length. Fun to use, good power, good spin. I would say that the Yonex frame is a bit more muted than the other two I mentioned. So that's also a matter of taste what you like some players like a more dampen response like you're playing with a dampener even if you're not using a dampener uh, while some prefer having a bit more connected feel you know you know where the ball is going a bit more vibration maybe it depends but this one is well dampened nicely powerful big sweet spot thanks to the isometric head shape in the extended length you're getting more power on serve a bit better reach a bit more real estate for your hands when you're playing a, a double-handed ba backhand, for example. So I can recommend testing an extended frame if you've never tried it. So they do have the 100V Core Plus, uh, which is 27.5 inches, and it's gonna give you more power, more stability, but obviously the contact point when you're playing with a longer racket is a bit different, so you need to get used to it. But overall, uh, the V Core 100 is a great frame as well, but more dampened. New V Core update early next year, I would assume, so if you're, you know, patient and you like the Onyx rackets, you can probably wait a bit, but otherwise this one is, is a great one. And when Magnus found his after testing so many different rackets over the years, he, he bought four and made the switch. So that's a good review for this frame, the Vcore 100. Technifiber, they don't really have a spin line. They seem more focused on the 98 Scrange rackets, a bit more control for like the Iga, the TF40, even the T-Fight, they all in the kind of narrow category, uh, you could argue. Uh, this is their power and spin frame. It's TFX1. This is the 300 gram model. Quite fast to swing, despite the swing weight similar to the other ones. A little bit stiffer, so the power level of this one is probably the highest of the ones I'll talk through today. When playing with this, also trying it with a few different tennis buddies, and, and we all felt like it's powerful, fun to use. You get loads of pop, so it's always fun to use powerful rackets. But then when it gets into match play, you might feel the ball flying a bit or you might not have that confidence you, that you need to go for a shot. That's really where I, where I felt this one failed me a bit. Quite a lot of string movement too, so it, it doesn't make strings last that long. This one I felt like it's a bit too powerful for my liking and slightly stiffer than the other ones. But it's a fun racket to use and if you like a lot of power, this one is definitely worth checking out because it's extremely powerful and gives you a lot on serve especially I, I felt like it was a fun racket to serve with so that's the tfx1 from technifiber they also have lighter models like all these brands have wilson they don't really have a spin line which is interesting they have um, the ultra which is power new ultra coming soon as you might know the pro staff which is more like a precision based racket a bit stiffer precision based legend in the game blade that's more control feel based quite a versatile frame and then you have the Clash, which I would put in the category of a spinny racket. Why? They have a profile very much similar to the other spin rackets you, you see. And they do offer a lot of string movement. They have pretty open grommets. The Clash are not known for giving you long string life. It's actually a racket that you feel like you need to restring a bit more often. The benefit of the Clash is that you get supreme comfort. The comfort is very good. It's a 57 stiffness rating as measured by Tennis Warehouse. So it's a really comfortable frame, whether you use generation one or generation two. And there's a lot of action in the string bend. So compared to all the other rackets I, I talk about, the ball stays longer of the Clash, which just kind of really sinks in and catapults out. And that can lead to a lack of control, but it can also give you some extra power. So that's also a reason why you need to demo because some players try the Clash once and they love it. You know, it's the racket, they stay with it. It's one reason that it became such a bestseller. Some players try it and they can't gel with it at all. They feel like they don't have the, enough control uh, and that the ball is catapulting a bit, which is one of those expressions we use for rackets that, that have a bit too much lively 
ness in the string bed. It's a little bit too much action happening with the strings moving. So um, that's good for spin, but it's not the best for control always. Uh, the most comfortable racket out of all of these ones that I talked about, I think definitely in the spin category, that's where I would put it. A fun racket to use. I, I felt like I these new models were a bit more muted than the older ones. So in my personal preference, I actually prefer the older ones, but these are good and they look better cosmetic wise, I would say. But if you have a history of tennis elbow, a clash should be on your demo list. Prince is a confusing brand. They have a lot of different models. They have the Ripstick, which is very, very spin oriented as well. Uh, super powerful, reminds me a bit of the TFX one, but more comfortable because of the O ports on the side of the Ripstick. Uh, so that has really huge holes here where the strings move a lot. So similar to Clash, the string life of the Ripsticks are not that great. But the comfort level is very good and it's a fun racket. I had a lot of fun using that. I am not at all a player that usually goes for any of these, you know, spin oriented frames. It's not my style. I'm more old school. I like a bit more of a control frame with a higher swing weight. That's just how it is. I've tried to change over the years, but I always tend to go back to 95 or 98 square inch rackets with control oriented features. I seem to play better. I seem to find my game more. But most players seem to like these these days because they get extra power, good top spin potential, and they're pretty easy to swing. So it's a win-win for a lot of players. I would say that this is also a spin frame, the, the twist power, and it's, it's tricky sometimes to categorize um, Prince's frames because they have quite a few that go in the same territories, a little bit like Technifiber. I would say like in, in Babla's case, it's a bit clearer and same with head. You would say this is a spin line, this is a control line and so on. Really enjoyed the X100, which is the lighter version. This is the Tour, that's 10 grams heavier, uh, 300 grams like the other rackets I mentioned, except the Clash, which is 295. Good power, lots of spin potential. I feel like you really need to play with spin. Quite an open pattern, this one. I would say that the, the Extreme and the Arrow are now a bit more controlled, but a fun racket to use. Medium 60 stiffness like the Extreme and the Arrow. And it's a lot of fans of the Prince twist power. Whether this twisted beam is more than a cosmetic fun thing, I can't really tell. But it's a stable frame. It does most of these speedy things well. Gives you good power too. Uh, I don't like it as much as the Extreme MP or the new Arrow, but it's definitely a nice stick and uh, something you should check out, especially if you're looking into more comfort. This actually has foam filling, so it's actually foam filled for a bit better dampening and um, comfort oriented frames. So there are a few of these spin rackets like Clash, the Ripstick, the Twist Power that are more comfort oriented and they, they shouldn't worry your elbow. There's also the Solinko came out with this Blackout early this year, Blackout 300, another 300 gram spin and power frame. I felt like this one was uh, performing pretty well. Uh, some players that tried it with me, they liked it. I wasn't a huge fan of the feel. I felt like it was kind of landing in the middle of a lot of these frames that I've, I've talked about. There was no standout benefit or feature, but it's a solid frame and it seems like the longer version, the XTD, which I haven't tried, seems to be a bit better. What I can tell from reviews and people I've talked to. This one is not bad. It shouldn't be overlooked. Didn't see any particular strengths felt a bit more like the TFX one. It offers good power, good spin, but a little bit higher stiffness. So the TFX one and the Solinko, I would put in the same location. They're probably my least favorites of these spin oriented rackets. And there's one more brand. I don't have that racket here because I, I had to send it back after the demo. That's a Dunlop SX300. It's also a very good spin oriented frame. I felt like the previous generation of the SX300 was probably a bit better. Uh, this one had a slightly higher stiffness, a bit more direct feel, a bit more power, uh, and it's a, a very good spin frame. But I felt like the previous generation was probably a little bit more solid because the swing weight was higher, but I know not everyone is going to like that, so that was my personal taste. But I think the SX300 competes well with, with the Extreme MP and the Aero, in a sense. It, it's also a good spin line and definitely worth checking out if you want maybe not the super mainstream brands, but Dunlop, which is still producing very good rackets, used to be a, a solid brand, but they're not maybe up on, the, on that legend level of Head, Bubble and Wilson. So those are the spin rackets I'm talking about today. If I would put them in any kind of order, that's always difficult, but in my personal preference, I would actually make it a, a tie between the Arrow and the MP. I have a very hard choice choosing between them. 
as you might be able to tell already. The MP fits a bit better for me, my one handed backhand, probably that's in the end what I would go for, but I really felt like this is such an improvement and a fun racket to use with a lot of good things going for it. But uh, these two are, are my top two, so if we would put them in, in twos, this would be the top tier in, in this list. All right, so that's my list and my perception of the current spin power 300 gram rackets. Very popular category, just look among club players. Please tell me in the comments which one is the most popular where you play tennis in your local region or club. Curious to hear how these rackets are doing and how the arrow, the new arrow is faring, for example, if you've tried it compared to the extreme and so on. Hope you like this type of video, you can obviously do more of these. If you're in the States and you want to find a hitting partner or coach, you should check out Play Your Court. They have this great service where you can, it's like a dating app for tennis players. You, you can find a, a partner that works for you that you can grow your tennis with. It's, it's a great idea and uh, you can get 50% off using my link in the description. So check that one out. If you want to support the work I do, Besides buying something in the description, please consider joining my Patreon where you get first impressions, behind the scenes stuff, weekly blog and so on. That is all for now. Have a nice day and don't forget to play sometimes.